All right, guys, this time we'll be dealing with uh, JSON Web Tokens and we'll see how with the help of uh, MongoDB, Express, Node.js and other libraries we can create a REST API and we can also protect certain rules via the JSON Web Tokens. So, for example, we have uh, one uh, API uh, for registering users. Uh, this time we'll be passing the parameters uh, via the uh, get requests. Usually we can construct uh, and it's better to pass them via post, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so we are passing email and name and password. And the moment uh, we submit those values, we'll see that uh, our user has been created and filled inside of our database. Uh, we can check this by going to MongoDB and here we have one collection users so if we check what's inside we see that uh, this collection has this user uh, if again go back and try to recreate the same user we see that uh, this user is duplicated so the email is already used all right the next thing is to see how to enter via those credentials and uh, to receive uh, such a json web token so we will use this uh, token to access a specific URL. Uh, right now, if we try to access the URL of info, um, we see access denied. And uh, if I use the token uh, to form another uh, GET request, but this time with this token, so I'll go to Postman. And uh, here I will um, go to this web address and uh, inside of the headers, uh, I'll use bearer and here I'll paste my token and if I click on send um, we see that uh, actually we are getting the uh, secret information inside of this URL and the status is uh, 200 and we, if we modify a little bit our token and try to send a request we see a response of invalid token so let's see how we can uh, program uh, this logic inside of Visual Studio Code Okay, that's the structure of our project. We have uh, one index.js uh, file where we load up express, mongoose and uh, .env as uh, additional modules. We have specific folders. Uh, those are controllers, models and routes. Inside of the routes uh, we have out.js. So basically we are registering uh, certain routes and uh, here we're using get for example for the register and whenever we have a request uh, uh, we are running at new user uh, function the same pattern follows for the logging and for the info and with uh, one little remark about the info we're using the out uh, middleware which will be showing next in a way that anyone who is accessing the info request will have to pass through our authentication uh, middleware first and then uh, okay when we, those routes are um, created they are exported in order to be used in our index uh, so we create one express application afterwards and uh, set up the application to uh, correspond to the uh, previously set up routes okay then uh, we load up our configuration file and inside of our configuration file actually it's one environment file and this is the connection string to our database and this is the name of the database and the IP address here we are using local hosts of course you can use uh, MongoDB Atlas or any other remote based uh, uh, database uh, as a service um, and then we also have a constant called uh, token secret this is for uh, the signing of our uh, token so when the environment is ready we are also ready to connect to the database we use mongoose connect we provide uh, from the environment db connect so we provide this string here and we connect to the database and then we configure uh, two parameters use new url parser and unified topology to true in order mainly not to uh, have errors in the console while running our server uh, we have one anonymous function which uh, is triggered when uh, we are connected, we are displaying connected to MongoDB. I have uh, placed here one uh, uh, event listener, so whenever we have some uh, uh, error, it will uh, 
show the error to the uh, console. And then uh, after everything is set up, we are listening on port 3000 and we display server is running. All right, a uh, little bit about the configuration uh, in our package JSON file. Actually, we are using NodeMon. This is another package uh, which is good to be installed because it will restart um, our server the moment we are making changes on our uh, JavaScript uh, uh, files. And uh, we are running Babel node and we are parsing and transpiling first uh, index.js in order to become from ECMAScript 6 to uh, version which is understood by Node.js. Uh, so this allows us to uh, write code uh, uh, and have, for example, imports and other uh, ECMAScript 6 uh, features inside of our code, which is uh, very useful. After we know the main structure, we can take a look at add new user, login user, and the info functions. Inside of our controller, we see that we are connecting to our database using Mongoose helper. And um, the first thing we'll do is to uh, wait and to create our internal indexing. This is because we are using uh, unique indexing uh, in a side of our posts in order not to have duplicate users. Then we having uh, one user schema and uh, we can take a look at uh, this user schema actually. And the rules on which we store our user inside of our database. Uh, so we have name, email and password and all of them have their own parameters if they are required, if they have minimum and maximum length and what type of um, uh, fields they are. Um, also we have uh, one parameter timestamps true which will automatically add created and updated at uh, fields. Next let's continue. Uh, we're using bcrypt uh, and also uh, library for handling uh, JSON web tokens. Initially we create our user by using our model and uh, we are creating one collection inside of the database which is called users. For the collection we set the rules specified in our user schema just beforehand we saw this. And then whenever we have a new user uh, we are doing some basic check whether our email, password and uh, name uh, fields exists inside of our request and uh, if not actually we are sending please provide them uh, in order to proceed okay next we're using user dot in it and this way we are initializing our model and we're waiting until the indexes are created and populated inside of mongodb in order to have uh, uniqueness uh, inside of them and uh, we are creating our user afterwards based on the provided uh, parameters inside of the query. The next uh, synchronously we are creating its password and we are uh, crypting it uh, using bcrypt uh, function. Uh, once everything is in memory, uh, we are ready to save uh, the data inside of our database. The moment uh, everything is created, we are outputting the user to the browser. So this is actually the newly created in the database user. When we are logging the user, again, we have a little check for the email and the password of the user. And then uh, we do a standard operation of finding just one record uh, with the criteria of email, which just has to be equal to the provided in the query email. And uh, if uh, there is any kind of error, first inside of the database query and second uh, in, uh, if uh, there is uh, not found such a user with such email we are just sending a non-existing user to the client and uh, if the user is existing we're comparing its password so the provided password with uh, the one we have inside of the database and uh, if we have a match we uh, form a token but if you don't have a match actually we send uh, okay your password is not uh, valid. If we have a match, we are uh, signing our token, we are creating one object where we are providing our user ID. Uh, we are using also our uh, token secret from our environmental file and uh, with this data we are creating uh, the secret token and we are sending it inside of our header and inside of the browser. Um, as you remember, the token that we used afterwards in uh, Postman was exactly this uh, token here. Okay, and now to the most important uh, helper, which is verify token. Okay, we are importing the helper function 
library JSON Web Token, and uh, we are parsing our header for the inclusion of the field uh, bearer. If we cannot find such field, uh, we directly uh, give 401 forbidden and access denied to the user. Next, if this token is provided in the request, and so it's inside of our header, uh, we are verifying the token and uh, using again our uh, token secret from the environmental file. So you can change this uh, token secret uh, to something which you like. And when it's verified, we just continue or we just pass to the next request. So from this middleware, it passes on. If it's not valid, we just send, uh, okay, the token is not valid uh, to the user. So that's the basic functionality. Of course, a lot more uh, can be done on uh, this project. So I advise you and uh, just to try the techniques and uh, happy coding using JSON web tokens. All right, guys, if you have found the information so far useful, you can subscribe to the channel.